What's up guys, Kevin Rogers with On Point Pro Styles Window Tinting in Gainesville, Georgia. I wanted to do an update video on my plotter that I use in my shop every day. It's the Workhorse 2 plotter from plotterdepot.com. Kind of want to show you some things I've done to my machine to help me use it successfully pretty much on an everyday basis. Things that I do to it to keep it running well. Also maybe some tips and tricks that might help you out along the way to keep the machine running smoothly and working well for you. In the end, hoping that this video might help you understand the machine a little bit better, uh, work with the machine a little bit better, and set it up to where it works for you on an everyday basis. So let's get to the plotter and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here's my machine, the Workhorse 2, 55 inch from plotterdepot.com. Obviously I've added these decals, so my machine overall might look a little bit different than uh, yours, mainly because I took the catch basket off. We'll get into that later. I did add a cool high-tech banner on the bottom, shout out to them. I put the decals on top. These are just extra pieces of tape. As I use rolls, I have tape readily, readily available to be able to put back on the rolls to keep them from spinning. Uh, but right here, you'll see yellow. So I have a yellow piece of tape over my cut strip. And I know from this camera angle, you can't really see it, but I actually have black tape on top of that. So before we get into the mechanics and the workings, and the settings of this machine, I got some cool things set up on over on my table back here. I'm gonna give you a view of that. We're gonna go over some technical things about materials and hopefully give you a better understanding of how those things can affect the ease of use of this machine and many others. So let's go to the table, let's check it out. All right, so here we are. I've got some materials laid out here. I've got some other stuff back here in the background. Before I get into anything else, I want to talk about the materials. Now, first off, we know our plotters, for the most part, to cut tint. That's what we want them to do. I'm sure most of you know that you can also cut other materials such as vinyl and PPF. But what was the plotter made for? Based on research and everything I could find, there's no tint cutter plotter on the market. None of these were specifically designed to cut window tint. They were for the sign company. They were to cut vinyl. Now this is Oracle 651 outdoor vinyl. It's obviously, if, if you haven't messed with it, but if you do, it's obviously much thicker of a material than tint. So how thick is thick? We commonly refer to the thickness of tint in mils. One mil tissue paper like film, 1.5 mil thicker, crispier, two mil. Um, what does mil mean? What exactly does that mean? Well, think of it this way. The average human hair is one mil or one thousandth of an inch thick. Take an inch, split it up a thousand times and one sliver of that inch, one thousand thousandths of an inch is the thickness of a human hair. So the common thickness of window tint is 1.5 mil or one five thousandths of an inch. So if you think of it that way, you're dealing with film that's one and a half times the thickness of an average human strand of hair. Why am I telling you that? Why is that relevant? Well, here's why. So if these machines were made for a thicker material, the tolerances allowed for proper cuts on a thinner material are gonna be tougher to achieve, hence why my machine cut all the way through. My machine didn't cut enough. It's not peeling right. It's not weeding properly. It's cutting through here and not through there. Going back to the material it was designed to cut, that's not usually a problem because there's a lot more tolerance or give in this material. I have here what some refer to as a caliper. Well, it's actually a micrometer, micrometer, what have you, but it, it measures a thousandth of an inch. So. To put this hopefully into a little bit more perspective, I'll tell you my lineup here. I've got tint with liner, just tint, just liner. I've got Oracle 651 vinyl with backing, just the vinyl, just the backing. And I even have PPF, my PPF. And I know this will kind of vary. It's tough to get a gauge on because it's um, a little softer of a material. So if you squeeze the, the uh, micrometer too hard, it can give you a false reading, but we'll get the best out of it for all intensive purposes, just education, something to look at and think about. So let's start with the vinyl, what the machine's actually made for. And we're gonna take the micrometer and you've gotta get just a little bit in there. So without squeezing too hard, cause it is a soft material, it's eight five thousandths of an inch. 
eight five thousandths of an inch okay now we'll just look at just the vinyl just what you're trying to cut through itself three three five thousandths of an inch three thicknesses of human hair now just the backing back at zero five five thousandths of an inch with this now let's go to our tint tint with the backing back at zero this is 1.5 mil high-tech classic film, by the way. We'll close our calipers, so 2.5 thousandths, 3 thousandths of an inch. So we'll put that down. Now let's just look at the film, the film we install with no liner. This says 1.5 mil film. That's what we're installing. Half the thickness of what the machine's designed for. By the way, that doesn't mean it can't be used clearly. It just means there's a understanding of the thickness of the material. Now just the liner, the part you're trying not to cut through, but you're trying to cut to half the thickness of a human hair. That's your tolerance. That's what you're allowed. All intents and purposes, PPF with the backing, 10, 10 and a half thousandths of an inch, just the PPF, PPF itself, seven and a half thousandths of an inch, and just the backing. Much thinner, coming in at three, thinner than even the vinyl, but still three, I'm sorry, six times the thickness of the tint liner. So why did I show you all that? What does all that mean? That means when I'm helping people set their machines up and I, I see and hear the frustration levels of why can't I get it to cut right? It's because the, the tolerances that we have are super, super, super thin. And that's why it matters the right blade, the right amount out, the the micro dialing of the blade in and out, the correct pressure, your cut strip, all of those things matter. So that's why I'm kind of giving you a little education here that, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody reach out and tell me if there's an actual tint plotter out there, but as far as I know, none of them were ever designed to cut tint. It just so happens that they do if they're set up correctly. So that being said, let me show you what I've got on my cut strip that I found helps cut the thinner materials instead of just cutting on the cut strip. Now remember, this has, it being thicker, has more of a tolerance level. So if the cut strip isn't perfect, with a dial indicator perfect, this is going to allow a little bit more give because the blade can travel in and out of the material because it's thicker and not cut through the material. So how do I combat that? I have found that these two tapes work extremely well for me. I heard about the Gorilla after I did some playing with just standard masking tape, painter's tape, and I boiled down to the 3M exterior surface tape. Uh, it's smoother, almost feels like vinyl, because on top of that, I use black Gorilla tape. Now, we all know Gorilla tape is super, super strong. So I put this down over the existing cut strip, and I pull a length of this of the machine, split it in half, then I have an extra one, I just roll back up on the roll and I take the other and put it right on top of the cut strip. And my cuts are excellent using that method personally. The other thing is using the proper blade. Now, there's been talk about 25 degree blade, 30 degree blade, we know there's a 45 degree blade and a 60. So vinyl's best with a 45 degree blade. PPF needs a sharper blade, so it's best with a 60. Uh, some cases I've heard of people using 45, so these are just numbers I go by. But tint, 25 is kind of ideal, but I switch between a 1.5 and a 2 mil film, so it's made it difficult for me to just use a 25. So I only use a 30 degree, and it's actually a 30 degree clean cut. So the next step, I'm gonna take you to my machine and I'm gonna show you my actual setup. We'll do a couple of cuts and then I'll show you some different ways to weed it uh, or weed the patterns in the event that maybe your blade's dolling uh, or it just didn't cut perfect that one time or what have you. But let's get to the machine. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're at the plotter. Uh, I think you have a little better view now of the tape I'm talking about. So this is the yellow tape. Right here on top of that is the Gorilla Tape right on top of my existing cut strip. I've already loaded a roll of film because we're gonna do a couple of cuts. I'm gonna kinda, my blade's already dialed in, um, but I am going to kinda go through the motions of uh, dialing your blade in and what to look for. But before we go into that, I wanna show you the blade holder, how much blade is out, as well as the difference between a clean cut blade and just a standard Roland compatible blade. So in this case, I have a standard Roland compatible blade. There's the 
tip of the blade. There's the bottom having to hold it so it doesn't roll out and disappear in my floor. So there's a standard compatible, rolling compatible blade. Here's our blade holder. So there's the tip and this is what the actual blade looks like compared to the others. You can see the basic big difference is that the thickness of the entire blade from the bottom to top stays the same. Uh, I just like them better, but a little bit of WD-40 on the back side of this blade, wipe it off just a little bit, no drips, and then when you put it in your blade holder, it allows it to spin nice and free during the cut. So I went to my software and film cut, I hit calibrate. I selected a 38 inch width because I'm using a 40 inch roll and that cut a strip from here all the way down to here. Many of the software, and like I said, we'll go through it another time, has the ability to cut some sort of one inch strip across the entire cutting surface for you to be able to check the weeding capability. You see that came out with ease. You also noticed I didn't just grab it and rip it out. I use sort of a tugging method so that it's popping apart. In the event there's one small spot that didn't cut all the way through, that popping tends to just pop past that and not have to worry about it. So that being said, I've pretty much shown you all this. I'm gonna cut an actual door window that doesn't cut all the way through and can be a trouble weeding. And I'm also gonna cut one at this setting, show you the difference and also a couple of tricks, how to get past bad weeding, let's call it. So I've cut two patterns, basically a passenger side and a driver side. The passenger window I cut at 51 grams, so we know that that's lower than what my blade is supposed to be, hopefully simulating a dollar blade and kind of some bad weeding. And then I've cut one at the 57 with the blade dialed in properly. So we're gonna get it over to the peel board, we're gonna do some peeling, and I'll show you some tricks I learned along the way. So I've got it up on my peel board. We're getting ready to peel it. I've noted which one is which. This is the one that's 51 grams. This is the one that's 57 grams. This one hopefully is gonna peel really, really well. This one hopefully is actually gonna give me a few problems. Now I'm gonna just split the two in half so I can peel them separately. Normally I would peel them all as one giant piece. So let's start with the one that peels really well from my experience anyways. So it's set up to cut on pull only. So it makes two cuts to make this one pattern. So it's starting at the furthest away, starting the blade and going furthest away and stopping. Then it's coming back and reconnecting at that point and coming back and finishing at that point. It's not always perfect. It's maybe the thickness of a hair off or more. So I like to rip away at that start and stop point because it's an easy place to start peeling. So I'm peeling away from the pattern and with a properly set up blade, now remember it's gonna probably tear here because that's where the two points met. With a prop properly installed blade, properly dialed in, weeding is just that simple. Now let's check the one that has less pressure on it hopefully simulating a bad blade. So we'll do the same. It ripped right away. It cut here, but didn't cut through here. Let's try it again. Maybe we'll get lucky. It's actually weeding better than I wanted it to. If that's the case, we'll get another piece. Nope, we're good. So you can see, why would it cut here, but not here? It's the microscopic irregularities across the cutting strip. But if you have that, in my opinion, that softer surface down on the cutting strip, there's more leeway for you to add just a little bit more pressure to help combat things like this. But let's just say you didn't know it, you cut a whole car out, you're trying to rip it and it just keeps ripping off in pieces like that. What can we do in the meantime in order to get our machine or to get this car done and get our machine dialed in after we're done with the job because nobody wants to deal with this afterwards. So I like to peel then cut. Uh, I used to, before I knew how to really dial in my blade, I used to cut first then peel. Well, here's why. Let me go ahead and trim this around as you normally would, about an eighth of an inch overlap. I'm just going for intensive purposes. Oh, let me rip this away. 
pull all of our extra away. And I know it started to peel here and I don't want to take the risk of it peeling all the way up here because I want to show you how to get past it. So I'm going to just make it stop. So there's, there's where we want to start back up. So I'm going to use my fingernail, maybe the back of my knife. And instead of peeling it back and down, I'm going to roll it. So I'm going to peel it away from the pattern and I'm going to roll it sort of under. So the tint is rolling this way. So as I'm peeling it down, you can see I'm not pulling it away. I'm not pulling it away from the pattern. I'm pulling it away from the pattern, but I've rolled it down and under. And as you can see, you hear it popping maybe, but it's still making a clean tear. So in other words, in the event that you run into that problem and it keeps tearing away, get through it. Don't waste the pattern. Don't sit there and try to finite the cut. Cut it around as if you had already weeded it, leaving it an eighth of an inch all the way around. And then when you peel, don't just peel it off like a sticker and peel it away. Roll it under. And peel it away. And usually nine times out of 10, it'll peel just as good on that one as it did on this one, even though this one is much less force or a dull blade than this one. So that's it um, for this one. Like I said, it's more of an update, kind of tips and tricks of what I do on my machine. Make sure to keep the blade clean, push it out, blow on the tip on it, you know, start of every day. And then make sure you keep the surface of the machine nice and clean, the rollers nice and clean, a um, little bit of compressed air or something like that. There's more to it about setting the machine up initially. Go back and watch those videos. They're available on the Plotter Depot YouTube channel. And then certainly come to this video. Watch this video in its entirety. And even if you haven't had one as long as I have, hopefully this video gets you working as well as mine does. So plotterdepot.com for the plotters and software. Again, I'm using the Workhorse 2, the Workhorse Plotter, as well as the Eco, these same sort of things apply, so it'll work well for with those as well. Uh, tintdepot.com, all the film and tools you'll need, super easy to buy, just go there. High Tech Films uh, is what I use now. They're my premier uh, vendor for all of my window films. I primarily use the High Tech Classic as well as the High Tech uh, Ceramic Pro, two of my favorites. So hightechfilms.com, uh, reach out to me if you need. Kevin Rogers On Point Pro Styles, Window Tinting in Gainesville, Georgia. I'm happy to always answer questions and help out anywhere I can. I'm on all the socials. Look me up, friend me, send me a message. Happy to help. Reach out to any of them. They're all glad to help as well. So till the next one, watch for the next videos. I've got some more coming up. We'll talk about software. We'll talk about more in-depth capabilities of the plotter, such as cutting vinyl and PPF, so on and so forth. We've got so much coming up. So definitely stay tuned, subscribe, hit the bell. See you next.